We're going to develop flight controls for a 747. Okay, in this case, this airplane is flying at uh, maybe 40,000 feet, um, and uh, we want to be able to adjust um, the elevator angle, but then also the thrust of uh, the engines to be able to maintain um, an airspeed, but also a climb rate as well. Okay, so. Um, we're going to do this by first of all um, developing a state space model okay so this is going to be the form of the state space model and then we're going to use this model in a model predictive controller to then maintain the airspeed and the climb rate by adjusting the thrust and the elevator angle so to access the files for this um, application Go ahead and open up um, apmonitor.com and uh, then we're going to go to um, slash do for dynamic optimization. That's the, uh, the course website. And if you scroll down on the right uh, modeling, then go to simulation and that will open up this page on simulation of dynamic systems. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and there you'll see uh, the exercise. Okay, so this exercise involves a simulation of this Boeing 747. Uh, as I mentioned, we can adjust the elevator and the thrust. Okay, so the elevator is this um, E on the back, and uh, then the thrust is the thrust of the engines. Um, and we want to maintain airspeed and climb rate. So here is our state space model. Okay, so this is the X dot on the left. Here's our A matrix, our B matrix and our C matrix, and our D matrix is not there, it's just, um, uh, it's gonna be zeros. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first of all is just go ahead and download, um, download this to my desktop, the flight controls. So this is the uh, solution, but it'll also give us some files, I'll walk through those uh, just a little bit. First thing that you wanna do is just go ahead and extract all the files, it's in a zipped archive. So go ahead and extract those, and then open up, first of all, within that, you'll have a subfolder, which is create the model. Okay, so first thing that we wanna do is just go ahead and work with the model and make sure that we have it uh, implemented correctly. And one way to do that is just perform some step tests. So we just step the elevator, step the thrust, see if it does what we think it should do uh, to see if our model is, is good. Okay, so I have my A, B, C, and D matrices there. And then I'll transfer them to uh, state space form and then also to a discrete uh, state space form as well and so I'll step that um, that continuous model I'll hold on to the plot and then step the discrete model as well okay then the final thing that I'll do is also generate um, these models in the AP monitor modeling language format with the APM underbar LTI uh, functions that will generate uh, 747C for continuous and 747D for discrete version of the state space models. Okay, and so when I run this, um, it's going to pop up with <clears throat> it's going to pop up with a step response, and so you can see the uh, continuous and discrete forms of this model. Um, if you want to, for example, use this in uh, Laplace form, as, and and uh, instead then you could also do um, transfer function of sys, and that will give me um, this same model in Laplace domain uh, too. Okay, so if I had, um, let's just do that. Let's do, um, uh, this will be my sys transfer function form. Okay, and uh, put that into, and then I'll plot that as well with a step. Um, and I'll do transfer function model. And then if I look at my final value, you can see that all three of those models are gonna be equivalent. Whether I have it in state space form or transfer function form, it's continuous or discrete. Okay, so that's great. So I have um, my input one, which was my elevator, and then this was my thrust. Okay, so if I um, increase my elevator, um, I see an increase in airspeed. I'm going to start going down, and my climb rate is also going to decrease here on the bottom left. 
Okay, and as I increase my thrust, um, I'm going to see an increase uh, in my airspeed initially, uh, but then I'm going to also start climbing. And there you can see on the bottom right that um, I'm going to start climbing and my, my um, airspeed will then decrease. Okay, so here I have a model of the 747. This is again at, at uh, 40,000 feet elevation. And uh, I normally start with zero with all of these values because I'm in deviation variable form. So these are changes from the nominal values. Okay, so great. So I have my, my model. Uh, let me just go ahead and open these uh, up, the ones that were generated into the uh, AP Monitor modeling language format. We'll use those for the model predictive uh, controllers. You can see it transferred the A, B, C, and D matrices there, and then also in uh, discrete form as well. Okay, so there's my uh, discrete form of my model. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just go um, to the step test. So now I, I generate a uh, step response in MATLAB with my AP Monitor model models as well. Um, and I just want to check to make sure those are, are correct. Okay, so we got the same answer that we did from the uh, first folder. There's also these in uh, Python as well. Let me just go ahead and run that in Python. Okay, so Python, I didn't have a version that would convert them to the, um, the, the AP monitor form, but you can use that with MATLAB and then start working with those in Python. I've also included those in the folder so in case you don't have MATLAB, you can just use Python for this example. Okay, so there is the um, Python one as well. Now the interesting one is where we get over to the uh, controller. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, let me go ahead and open up the MATLAB one as first. Okay, so this one, there are a number of uh, tuning um, parameters that I can use. But first of all, what I'll do is um, just go ahead and specify a server and an application name. I'll go ahead and clear uh, any previous application, um, load my continuous version of my model, and then also a control horizon. It just has the time points where I want to solve the solution. This is going to change it to control mode. Okay, so I mode uh, 6 is, is control. I have adjusted the number of nodes um, in my collocation structure. And then I've specified also what are my manipulated variables. So U1 is going to be my elevator, U2 is going to be my thrust, and then uh, Y1 and Y2 are going to be my airspeed and climb rate. Okay, now I have some MV tuning. So this is this section right here is the MV tuning. So that's my those are my manipulated variables. And I just put some upper and lower bounds on the elevator and then also on the thrust. Okay, it can go negative because I'm in deviation variable form. And I also put on a delta cost. Okay, so that um, is penalizes movement in the manipulated variable. And then in, for my CV tuning, um, and I'll change a couple of these and just show a couple um, different responses. But I have a tau, which is my first order time constant for any reference trajectory. So I said I want it to get to airspeed, my airspeed set point just a little bit faster, a five. And um, my climb rate, I'm going to let it get about 63% of the way there in um, 8 seconds instead. Okay, here's my initial trajectory. If you set it to 0, then it's just a pure deadband. 2 is going to be a first order reference trajectory uh, that recenters at every cycles, cycle. So here's also my set point high and low. Because I have a deadband, I have to have an upper and a lower limit for each one. Okay, and then I turn on uh, my MVs and CVs and then I go ahead and solve my problem. So the rest of it is just retrieving the solution and looking at the results. Okay, so when I run this, um, it's going to go ahead and run uh, the controller, and it'll open up also this, this uh, web viewer where I can also browse and look at the um, solution. Okay, and if I um, just close that, I also plotted them. Okay, I wanted to plot them all so I could see all of them on the same plot. And there you can see um, the elevator and the thrust. And I'm trying to maintain my airspeed within this deadband. Okay, so airspeed I got uh, within five seconds. I said I want to get, you know, 63% of the way there. And so that controlled how fast it got to the new set point. Okay, this one, the climb rate, you can see it kind of bounces around a little bit in here, but stays within that deadband. 
Uh, the other objective was to try to minimize this MV movement so I didn't have too drastic of changes there. So one thing to do is come back in here and uh, you know just change some of these. Um, let's say I um, set these this as just a pure dead band. Okay, and then I'll run it again and then just look at uh, the responses. If you don't want the web viewer to come back up, just comment out um, the APM web. Uh, that opens the uh, web viewer. So I'll just comment that out so it just shows me the MATLAB plots instead. Okay, so there's a pure dead band now. So I didn't have a reference trajectory. I just said get as fast as you can to the new range and then stay within that range. And so it did that on the climb rate and then also the airspeed. And there you can see the movement of the elevator and also the thrust. Okay, let me tune this just a little bit differently. Um, let's say we didn't have the D cost on the manipulated variable movement. We didn't penalize uh, MV movement. We can get a little bit better answer, but we're going to be changing a lot more. Um, and so there might be some chatter in our MV movement. Okay, so you can see I kind of had a sawtooth there on the elevator and thrust. So it gets you there just a little bit faster, but um, at the expense of less, um, you know, more movement um, in the manipulated variables. Okay, so I'll go ahead and add those um, back in. So I can change this. Um, you know, let's say I want to get there much faster, uh, but I want to use my reference trajectories. And let's say I wanted to make both of those uh, positive changes as well. Set point high, maybe uh, go up to 20.5 and, and between 20.5 and 19.5. Okay, that's for the airspeed. So increase a lot in airspeed and then also a climb rate as well. Okay, so you can see that it um, increased the thrust, also increased the elevator, um, and then came back to some nominal uh, steady state conditions. Okay, so um, I'm going to show this in Python as well. So if you'd like to run this in Python instead, um, I'll go ahead and run this. Um, and it should give you the same answer that you saw uh, for the other one, except it's just in um, just using Python. Okay, so that concludes um, this exercise. The a couple of things that I want you to try to do are just get familiar with some of the manipulated variable and controlled variable uh, tuning. You can also try different set point combinations. Um, you know, just work with this controller and, and try to get an intuitive understanding of how to develop and tune a model predictive controller.